What's going on everyone? This is Dom and today we're talking about my last two weeks with the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and this is, you know, it's a great phone. I mean, it's the top dog for uh, 2020, at least thus far. And there's a lot to unpack here with this guy. So sit back, relax, and let's dig in. So when it comes to design here, I mean, everything in my opinion has drastically changed when you compare it to, well, the uh, previous Note or the Galaxy S20 series. I mean, we have a pretty nice looking phone here. I love the matte finish on the back. It's just great because it dodges fingerprints like nobody's business. And I do like kind of these squared off edges that we have on the top and the bottom, but woo! That camera bump right there, I mean, this thing is huge. It's like its own little detachable, like I feel like I can detach this and start taking pictures with it elsewhere. It is so big and bold on the back. And I mean, I guess that's kind of, you know, the, the point. I'm sure this was very intentional as a like a statement piece for the phone and that's cool and all. And you can still have that shape on the back, but I think I would not have, had any problem with the phone being a little bit thicker just to make A, the camera bump less of a bump and B, bump up the battery capacity. But we'll talk about battery life in a little bit. Now, one thing that I noticed right off the bat with the Note 20 is the S Pen and how it's been relocated to the other side of the phone. Like it used to be on this side and now it's over here. And that may not be a big deal to everyone. Like it's not the end of the world by any means, but it did take a little getting used to not putting my thumb to push it out on this side of the phone and when it's on the other side. Again, not a big deal, but when you kind of put it into like, okay, for me personally, I'm not a huge S Pen person. I'm not the one that's hammering the productivity with the S Pen. And when you move it, it kind of makes it less memorable in my opinion. Of course, the S Pen is like super flawless than ever before now uh, with this note. I mean, the response rate is amazing on it. Like it's literally, uh, it's a really good writing experience. It's the best stylus that you can ever possibly have on a phone and there are a bunch of features that I'm not really gonna go into in, in this entire video because I, I mean, they're pretty much, a lot of them are carried over from previous generations, but this thing is a productivity monster if you're using the S Pen to its full potential. There's no doubt about that. I'm just one of those people that I'll use the S Pen like a little bit here and there and you know, then it'll just, it'll slowly start tapering off in usage uh, when it comes to this phone because I'm mainly using this, this phone at the end of the day after all the novelties kind of wear off for two reasons, the camera and the beautiful display on the front side. Yeah, so we have a 6.9 inch display with a resolution of 3088 by 1440 and it has up to a 120 hertz refresh rate. And I say up to because that's really only available when you're using uh, the phone in the full HD plus mode. Uh, you don't actually get the full 120 hertz otherwise and it is adaptive. So it will switch when it needs to and when you will have a better experience using the 120 hertz. And that's not a bad thing either. Like I'm totally okay with that because do what you can to save the battery life because I definitely need it with this guy right here. But uh, the display on this, just watching multimedia, anything like that. It's absolutely an awesome experience and one of the main reasons why I always gravitate towards the Note because it's just got a huge, beautiful display. The speakers are cool. We have stereo speakers, uh, the bottom firing speaker and using the earpiece as one. I do notice that sometimes when I'm holding the phone, I block that bottom speaker. Not that big of a deal, just watch out for it. Just something to take note of. So like I said, the other main reason I'm using this smartphone that I, I really actually like it, it's because of the cameras. But let's, let's stop and think about this for a second. The camera system on here is pretty much what we saw on the S20 series. Like there are improvements and don't get me wrong, we'll talk about all of this great stuff in a second. But let me ask you, is this phone, the Note 20 Ultra, is this an exciting phone? Is this really exciting? Like truly? Yes, it's new and shiny, but don't let that cloud your judgment as far as like innovative and exciting. Because the way I see it, this came out back in what, February or March, just under a different name. And now we have several technical improvements off of what that previous S20 offered originally. And now we have it on the Note 20. And so what makes this exciting? It got a cool new look. And I mean, it's got some cool 
high-end top-of-the-line specifications in case you didn't know got the snapdragon 865 plus 12 gigabytes of ram 128 gigabytes of storage i mean this thing obviously has the works but like i said before is it actually exciting yes it's new and shiny and i appreciate it but I don't think it's that exciting of a phone and mainly because everything's so watered down these days, right? Like earlier this year, we have the S20, the S20 Plus, the S20 Ultra. Now we have the Note 20, the Note 20 Ultra, which is kind of just a rehash of the other three that came out previously. And what makes this Note special now, right? Let's talk about that. And the main answer here is this little guy, the S Pen. That is what makes the Note series special these days is because it has the S Pen. You used to be that the Note series was if you wanted everything under the sun in one little shiny bucket of smartphone, you would get the Note series. But now, I mean, if you get the S20 Ultra, you can get everything under the sun in a nice shiny bucket too. You don't need to buy the Note unless you're using the S Pen. And that's actually not a bad thing, but I do think that Samsung should kind of refine all of this and maybe just go with, let's launch an S20, an S20 Ultra, and the Note. You know, we have a small phone, a big phone, and one Note. Because hey, I'm not buying this uh, $1,000 for a plastic smartphone nonsense. Like, nope, that ain't happening, sorry guys. Um, this is $1,300. And is there enough new and exciting about this to warrant that price tag? I mean, that's totally subjective, but let's move on a little bit here. Uh, I do wanna talk about the camera quality here because it is phenomenal. Speaking on one of those technical improvements from the S20 series, we have a lot of the same here from that phone, but it has been improved and in such a great way. So around the front, we have a 10 megapixel selfie shooter. That's cool and all, but on the backside, we do have the same 108 megapixel shooter that you saw on the S20 series. We have an F1.8 aperture, and this is majorly improved with the laser autofocus that's on here now. We have a 12 megapixel ultra wide shooter right here, which is pretty nice, and a telephoto lens at 12 megapixels that is up to a five times optical zoom, which is pretty nice. And we have up to 50 times super resolution zoom that to be honest, if you're above 20 times zoom on that, just it's not even that great in favorable lighting. So I personally don't prefer to use that, but I do like punching in and out of five times zoom and uh, the ultra wide is amazing. I mean, the, the camera experience on here is great. And if you wanna see a full gallery of the photos that I took with the Note 20 Ultra right here, I will be sure to leave a gallery linked below for you. We can check those out. So this is a rear camera test. Uh, we're shooting at 4K resolution on the backside of the Note 20 and it does go up to 8K resolution, which which is pretty awesome in my opinion, but not very practical. Um, if you want to use the super steady mode here, that gives you a lot more stability. Uh, you are limited to 1080p though, so keep that in mind. I feel like most people will shoot 4K, um, and if you want to use the super steady, like I said, you're left with 1080p. But this is a quick audio video test on the rear side camera of the Note 20. Now, as far as the software performance goes, I mean, it's, I hate to say, oh, it's buttery smooth. It is, you know, I mean, this is like basically a brand new phone and really like long-term uh, with this phone is one thing that you have to kind of look at when judging the overall software performance of this guy because out of the box, even after everything's set up and all my apps are loaded up, it's still smooth as hell. I mean, it, it's a 2020 smartphone. Should I expect any less from that? Should I expect any less from the price tag that comes along with this 2020 smartphone? Of course, we do have ultra wideband 5G capabilities with this, which is nice for future proofing, but currently right now, I mean, ultra wideband is very, very uh, slim pickings in uh, major cities at best. <laughs> so don't count on that as the reason that you buy this phone. Another thing that I am a fan of with this, and I'm sure it's something that can be added to maybe the S20 series via software because it doesn't seem like a hardware thing, is wireless decks, right? I think it's pretty cool. I can just cast my phone to a TV and use it as a computer using the S Pen or my finger as a trackpad on the screen. That's pretty awesome. I mean, I give them that. That, that is freaking cool. I dig that a lot. So let's talk about the battery life here, right? And I mean, this is a beast of a phone, 4,500 milliamp hour battery inside of here. It is a big phone. And because of that, you kind of expect 
the best battery life, right? The bigger the phone is, the bigger space you have for battery, the better battery life you get. That's kind of the expectation a lot of the time. Not necessarily the case with the Note 20 here, and that is only because it's just so damn thin, right? Like, I, I, maybe that's not exactly the reason why I'm sure there's a lot more that goes into that. You know, your signal strength, your brightness, etc., things like that. But as I said before, I wouldn't have been mad if we made it a little bit thicker to kind of A, take away that huge camera bump a little bit and B, add more battery because on a normal usage day for this, I've gotten about five and a half screen, uh, hours of screen on time. And that's not terrible, but it's not amazing either. Uh, and you know, hopefully we see improvements with that via software updates. I'm not holding my breath personally, but 4,500 milliamp hours is not going to be the king of kings. Maybe next year we get a bit of a thicker phone with a bit of a bigger battery. It does help that we have the ability to use super fast charging with this guy. Uh, we have super fast wireless charging. There's a lot of ways to top this off really quickly if you need to. So I guess the battery life thing isn't that big of a deal, but it is kind of like I just expected better, I guess. Maybe my expectations are too high at this point in the game for uh, a note in 2020 with all these really cool features that I also do like. I don't know if I'd be willing to give up anything that came in lieu of getting better battery life. I don't think that there's anything that I would want to get rid of. So take that for what it's worth. I think as an entire package, everything here is very well put together. I mean, I like the fingerprint sensor under the display. It works good. I love the cameras on the back. I do like the design of this. Not a fan of how they move the S Pen to the other side. That's just kind of weird to me, but I think this is packaged very well. Overall, it's a fantastic phone, but is it a $1,300 fantastic phone? That's, that's a tough one uh, to, to, to answer because I mean, that's kind of in the eye of the beholder. Like, is it worth that much money for you to have this phone? Or would you rather pay a thousand dollars to get a plastic version of this phone that's not quite as good in, in every capacity. Once you get over a thousand dollars, you're starting to get in that risky area. I would spend, I would all day long spend a thousand dollars on this phone, but that extra little $300 definitely makes a difference. I'm sure this will go on sale at some point in the future. So keep that in mind if you're looking to pick one up. I would wait for more reviews on the standard plastic note 20 um, because Samsung didn't give us any of those. So keep that in mind uh, before you go run out and buy your phone. But I don't know, what do you think about the note 20 ultra? Let me know in the comments section below. Do you disagree with what I said? Do you agree with what I said? I want to know all your thoughts and opinions down there and leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos like this drop in the near future. I really do appreciate all the support, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dom and I will catch you in the next video.